Hey, we're at Logan High Crimson Field for a rare home game for the Logan Grizzlies. Yeah, they're doing some construction here in the Grizzlies' home field, so they don't get to play here much this year. We'll talk more about that during the game, but let's talk about the game. Logan coming off of a big win over Skyview last week. Their first win at Skyview, or their first win against Skyview since 2013. Can they build upon that tonight? with a game against the Bear River Bears, a Bear River team that's really smarting after giving up 43 points to Green Canyon last week. Bear River comes in at one and four and they are looking for their identity. Logan last week only throwing five passes in the game, but they ran rough shot over Skyview, coming up with more than 250 yards rushing. Will the Grizzlies run the ball tonight? Will they pass the ball tonight? And will the defense keep doing what they did last week at Skyview? We're gonna find out coming up next on the Game of the Week. Wendy's is saying thanks for making the Junior Bacon Cheeseburger America's number one bacon cheeseburger by giving you more of what you love. Introducing Wendy's Giant Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. Double the beef, double the bacon, and now it comes in a giant meal for $5. With nuggets, fries, and a drink. There's absolutely nothing Junior about it, except the price. Get Wendy's $5 Giant Junior Bacon Cheeseburger meal before it's gone. chance to talk with coach Bart Bowen earlier today we talked about his team and their win against Skyview last week and their non-region games he said as we looked at our non-region schedule we knew we had to come into region play at two and two that was our goal no worse than two and two and that's how they ended up their non-region play two wins two losses he said a couple of the games the score didn't indicate how how hard we played we just made some mistakes and let those games get out of hand in those two losses but he was really pleased with his team and how a young team has really come together and the confidence that they're playing with. And that was evident last week against Skyview to go on and score double-digit unanswered points in that second half to take a lead and win that ball game and hang on and do something that the Grizzlies haven't done in close to a decade. Can they build on it tonight against the Bears? You're going to find out. The Game of the Week is coming up next. Say the word base. Say the word, mess. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Wendy's of Cache Valley. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology. Bring back what you have been missing. Palmer Home Furnishings. Our low overhead means higher quality at lower prices. Aspen Dental, get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. Custom Fence Company, privacy, security, peace of mind. Rich's Cars and Credit, good guys you can trust. Anderson Seed and Garden, growing better gardeners. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. KSM means music, music is all we do. Factory Pizzeria, we're open late after the game. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's TV station for over 30 years.
Crimson Field, just a couple of blocks southwest of downtown Logan on a beautiful September evening in Cache Valley. And tonight, the Logan Grizzlies playing host to the Bear River Bears in a Region 11 game on the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Olson. I'll be with you all night long as we watch the Bears and the Grizzlies tussle on a work in progress. Crimson Field, oh, the field's fine, but I don't know if you can tell from the shot there where it looks like there's just cement around where the track should be. Yeah, they're doing some, some uh, improvements on the track, and it was supposed to be done earlier in the year. You know, like with everything recently, there have been some delays with getting some materials and such, and so the Grizzlies haven't been able to play on their home field. They, they got the go-ahead today to come play on this field. They were originally going to play this game at Skyview. But because of the rain last night, they were unable to do the work that they were going to do on the track, so they got to go ahead to play the game here tonight. They've got the thumbs up to play the homecoming game here next week. And then that'll be it for Crimson Field games, as they'll have to play their, probably most of the rest of their games on separate fields. Well, last week, the Grizzlies with their first win against Skyview since 2013. 10 unanswered points in the fourth. Titan Mason, 39 rushes, 186 yards, and a touchdown. As a team, the Grizzlies rushed for 267 yards in that ball game. Keaton Pond, four for five, passing 38 yards. Mason had one reception for 25 yards. It set up a key score in the fourth quarter. So it was a big game by Mason, a big game by the Grizzly defense, and now they're gonna try to follow it up against the Bear River team that Logan's coaches are telling me, hey, we heard that Logan's kind of changing up some of their defensive scheme to try to stop uh, to stop what they think we're gonna do. So we're not really sure what we're gonna see from the Bears tonight. They're gonna find out really quickly as Logan will kick off. Bear River in all white. This one's gonna be taken about the five yard line, right up the middle and taken down at about the 27 yard line is Roberts. And that's where Bear River will start. Riker Jepson, number two, their quarterback, 70 for 119, 59%, 803 yards, about 11 and a half yards per completion, nine touchdowns, six interceptions going against a defense that leads the state in interceptions, nine thieveries by this Defensive backfield, Cooper Red, four on his own. Jepson's gonna give the little toss and a little end around. Turn the corner and pick up yardage out to the 35 for Marble. Marble picking up good yardage out to the 35 yard line, second and three. Now three wide receivers to the far side, and one to this near side. Roberts, Marble, and one other to the far side. I didn't see the number of the one to this side either. And they're gonna turn and give. And through the hole is Jones. Jones picks up the first down and another five yards. He's the leading rusher on this team. In fact, he picked up eight. So good start for Bear River, 15 yards on their first two plays. And now Jepson looks like he's gonna keep. And he is walloped. And that's one thing that Coach Bowen said, our guys will hit you. And Alan Lazari came up and did just that. A loss of a yard for Jepson. The two Lazaris playing out of corner, Allen and Ryan. They had a big game last week. Oh, Logan's offside, it's Bracken. Bracken leads the team in sacks with four. Logan with 10 sacks as a team. And the first violation of the night goes against the Grizzlies. That 
moves the ball out to the 47 yard line. Turn and give to Jones, he's got a lot of room around the left side. He's pulled out of bounds by Lazari, but he picks up a first down. Eight yards for Jones, just like on his first carry. And Bear River really closed down the right side of that Logan defense. Now three backs in the backfield. Jepson turns and gives it to Jones, and there's a lot of Grizzlies there. Loss of two. Kennington in there on the tackle. Talked about Jones being the leading rusher. 76 carries, 282 yards, 3.7 yards per carry. Riker Jepson's right behind him. About four yards per carry. Jepson's going to throw. He's got a man out in the flat to the near side. It's going to be third down. Boy, that's a heck of a spot. Gave him 11 yards. The Ballard. And here goes Jones. He's got an opening on the right side. Turns the corner, races to the pylon. Touchdown. 37 yards on third and one as Bear River runs through that Logan defense like a hot knife through butter. Fifty-one yards on four carries and a touchdown on this drive for Jones. Jensen on for the PAT. He's got 13 point after kicks this year and no field goals. This one's down, kicks away, and it's good. 7-0. Bear River strikes first. You're watching the game of the week on the Valley Channel. Well, it's that time of year when people are trying to decide what to do in their yards and their gardens. What's the best time to start pulling things out? What do I have to do to get things winterized and ready? The folks at Anderson Seed and Garden can help you out. They're right there in the historical district on Center Street. But, you know, if you go to their website, they've got all sorts of information, things like five easy steps to a beautiful lawn. Every year they have a new seed list and planning guide. They've got solutions to deer problems. AndersonSeedAndGarden.com. That's Anderson with an O. Is their website, tons of videos, pictures, and helpful tips. Order all your gardening supplies there too. Anderson Seed and Garden, a game of the week on the Valley Channel, sponsor. So the Bears waste no time on their first possession. They march it down the field and put it into the end zone, a 37 yard run by Jones on third down and two. And the Grizzly offense will take the field, staring at a 7-0 deficit. Keaton Pond, 44 of 73, 60% on his completion, 670 yards, 15.23 yards per completion, seven touchdowns, four interceptions. And Titan Mason behind him, 69 carries, 324 yards, nearly five yards a carry, two touchdowns on the season. And Logan, Looking like they might run it on first down. Pond is going to slip out of the backfield looking for Thornley. Thornley makes one man miss. No, he's got a hand on him and he hauls him down, but not until after a pickup of 13 yards. First down, 34 yards passing for Pond last week as they just ran the ball, and he's got 13 on his first completion here. And Bear River was looking like they were expecting a run. And if you look at them now, they got eight guys within five yards of the line of scrimmage. They're going to turn and give it to Bracken. Bracken pushes forward and gains a couple. 
Bracken with limited carries last week. It was Mason that was really carrying the load. Mason's, Mason's pops. His dad is the offensive coordinator here. His brother Matt played last year, the last couple of years here at Logan High, and he was a, a key to the teams the last couple of years. And Titan Mason looks a lot like him as you watch him play. Motion by Lang. Throw it out wide, that's complete, and into Bear River territory, it's Thornley again. 11 yards and a first down. Two for two, 24 yards for Pond to get things started. Bear River seven, Logan zero, first possession of the game for Logan. 8.20 to play in this first quarter. Lang joins two other receivers to the far side. Now Thornley's gonna come in motion. Fake the give to Bracken, look for Thornley again. Thornley has one blocker out there, then he has to try to make one man miss. He can't do it, he's spun down after a gain of about four. Roberts really threw him down. Bear River playing a couple of deep safeties. I mean, they've been playing early on here. They're playing eight guys within about five yards, six yards of the line of scrimmage. They are playing eight in the box. And now they're only one high safety and they're gonna pitch it to Mason. Mason looks for a cutback lane, still on his feet and he's finally slung down. He gets out near the 40 yard line, a four yard gain. It's gonna be third and two. First third down for the Logan offense. Wins against Juan Diego, Bonneville of Idaho and Skyview for Logan. Losses to Beaumont and Woods Cross. Fake the give. Lang is wide open. He's got the first down and more as he pulls a tackler down to the 30 yard line. A gain of 11 on third and two. It's a Grizzly first down. So Kaimani Lang getting into the act here early last week. He was the lead blocker on so many runs. It was Mason that got all the props, but that offensive line and Lang really did some work last week. 6.40 to play in the first quarter, 7-0 Bear River. Logan on the move. Tight formation, Lang switches sides to this near side. Send Thornley in motion, they give it to him. There's gonna be a hold, they don't call it. And Thornley gets down to the 29 yard line and he's slow getting up. He got thrown down hard, boy. It looked like there was a hold in the backfield and they didn't throw the flag. Thornley's slow getting up. And he asks the uh, sideline to bring somebody in for him. And Thornley's gonna come out and Ryan Lazari will come in. Six yard run for Thornley. And Thornley's seeing a lot of action here in the early going as Coach Bowen calls a timeout after Thornley was slow to get up. He got spun down and slammed down at the end of his run. Thornley not a, not a big player. But he's already touched the ball four times. This will be the eighth play of this drive. And Thornley's touched it four of the seven so far. Lang's got a catch. Mason and Bracken each have a run. And Thornley's done the rest. 5.56 to play in the first quarter. On a Chamber of Commerce evening in Cash Valley. Second and four. Again, a tight formation. Here comes a linebacker. Oh, my goodness. 
Hahn had a man out there. He had Reed Olson, big tight end. He turned and he looked and it just sailed a little over his head. And I said, oh my goodness, because that may have been a score if they were able to hook up. I don't think Olson, when he turned, I don't think he could find it. And then Pond just sailed it just a little bit. Bear River bringing some heat. Let's see if they bring more than four after Pond. Bracken's in the backfield with him. Thornley back in the ball game. He's gonna go in motion with Mason and now they're heavy to the left side. Four man rush. Pond stays in there and I don't know if it was tipped or not but he threw it way behind his intended receiver. Mason. And so the Logan drive bogs down at the 24 yard line of Bear River. And Morales will come on to attempt a 41 yard field goal from the right hash. Pond is the holder. Morales, plenty of leg, it's wide, let's see. It's good, it hooked back inside. It looked like it was gonna roll wide, but it hooked inside. That right upright, excuse me, left upright, and it's 7-3. Logan on the board, Bear River leading. The Logo Shop is a longtime sponsor of sports here on the Valley Channel. Since 1990, yeah, they started with two people, and now they employ almost two dozen. They will logo hats, shirts, mugs, frisbees, blankets, backpacks, thumb drives, phone cases, mouse pads, you name it, they logo it. In fact, that's their tagline with us, the Logo Shop. We logo stuff, all kinds of stuff, and that's no lie. The Logo Shop, one of our Game of the Week sponsors. So a promising drive for Logan bogs down at the 24 yard line. They have to settle for the field goal at 7-3 and Bear River with another chance and another good run back. As Roberts muffed the kick originally back at about the two yard line and he returns it 31 yards up to the 33 yard line and that's where Bear River will take over. See if Logan makes any adjustments. Tilose, the nose guard for Logan. Tilose Tapua, he played a heck of a game last week. And he's been a key to this defense. Here's Jepson and say Tapua's name. And he appears as he comes off the bottom of that pile. No gain for Jepson. Bodie Rudd comes off the bottom of that pile as well. Poa is a guy that could end up playing on Saturdays. Number 53, the nose guard in this three man front. Hand it off to Jones. Jones makes the first guy miss and a flag comes in quickly. Right at about the two yards past the line of scrimmage on a five yard run. And let's see if we've got an offensive hold. It's back at the 30. Yeah, right at the line of scrimmage. the white hat and one of his guys are talking about it here and Logan's backing him up and that's the call holding and it's gonna back Bear River clear up to the 25 yard line makes it second and almost 18 and for Bear River their first penalty of the game 445 to play in the first quarter, 7-3, Bear River. Motion, and Jepson rolls that way. Finds his man underneath, he's hit immediately and brought down, that's Olsen. He gets the penalty yardage back, about eight yards. And it makes it third and nine for Bear River.
Brock Brown. The safety on this near side, red on the other. Lots of time for Jepson over the top and it's too tall for his intended receiver, Jones. Check that, that's Ballard. Ballard wanted a flag, none forthcoming. And Cooper Red was there to defend. Coach Bowen told me, oh, Jepson's out there on fourth and nine. Now flag is the running back. Jones moved forward as the quarterback was moving. And then he stopped. And you can go in motion side to side. You can't move forward. You can't just run forward and stop. So that's going to back Bear River up even more. The Bear River sideline was making that motion like kick. Hey, kick it. So might be an option type thing for Jepson. Fourth and 14. Jepson will kick it. Mason's going to watch it roll by him. And oh, my goodness. What a kick by Jepson. That's going to roll all the way to the two-yard line as Mason watched it roll that far. And that's one where they might talk to him and say, hey, son, go grab that. But everybody knows a bouncing football is a tricky proposition. And Logan will start 97 yards away from the end zone that they want to be in with 3.51 to play here in this first quarter. Sidney Nielsen playing there at the nose, or one of the defensive tackles, getting a push. And they're going to go up top looking for Thornley, and Thornley can't get past the defensive back. Good job out there to run with Thornley. Caleb Korth, Korth the junior, running stride for stride with Thornley. He, he gave Thornley a pretty big cushion. And Pond, after starting four for four, is now missed on his last three. Bear River again with eight in the box. Nine in the box. Pond waiting for somebody to come free, and he throws a pick. Pond throws the pick at the five-yard line. It's returned to the four. He had Mason wide open in the flat, and instead he tried to force it in. I don't think he saw the linebacker who sat and there were two guys defending the guy that he threw it to. And while Mason's run into the flat wide open. So Pond with the error there. And it's first and goal for Bear River at the three yard line. Logan with the first miscue of the ball game. Jepson's gonna hand to Jones. Jones tripped up and brought down Right at the line of scrimmage, three and a half to play in the first quarter, 7-3, Bear River. In fact, he lost a yard. They, they pushed that back to the four yard line. He lost about a half a yard. Jepson with three backs behind him. Jepson's gonna keep it. Good job with hiding that ball, and Logan didn't know that he had it, and he walks into the end zone for a four-yard touchdown. Three carries, three yards, and a touchdown for Jepson. His first carry was for minus one. His second didn't gain anything, and that one gained four and six points. So the turnover bites the Grizzlies. And they're staring at a 10-point deficit with a PAT still to come. 3.01 to play in the first quarter. As the Grizzlies getting off to a little bit of a slow start. Kicks up and good by the Bears. 14-3 with 3.01 to play in the first. Bear River leads Logan on the game of the week.
Richest Cars and Credit, one of our game sponsors. You know their motto? Well, their, it's not really their motto, it's their goal, their mission. It's stress-free shopping. Yeah, if you've been car shopping, it's not awesome. It really isn't. And Rich's, they vow to make that a better experience for you, make it stress-free. They've got close to 100, yard, 100 cars in their inventory. They've got a selection of cars under 25,000 and, and under 10,000, and those are hard to find. So you can go on their website and see those, and see what they've got. Rich's Cars and Credit, one of our Game of the Week sponsors. So Logan with a couple of questionable decisions. One, a punt that they didn't try to get to. And it was, you know, in the, in the defense of the returner, it was off to his right. And you do want to be careful, but it hits the ground at the 25 yard line and then goes all the way back to the three. And then the Grizzlies end up throwing an interception. Missing a wide open guy and throwing it to the guy that was double covered. And that's what happens in football. Sometimes those mistakes happen and what can you do to not let those multiply and instead build upon the positive. And that's what Bear River's doing here tonight. They came out with a great looking first drive. Logan stopped them on their second drive. But then they take the ball over at the three yard line and end up scoring. Now they're making, for some reason, they're making uh, Tupua come off the field. Not sure why, I don't know if he's bleeding or what, so they had to bring somebody in for him. He'll probably go in next play. The official pointed to him and said he had to run off. Bracken gets the hand off and a yard is all. Hand off to Ethan Bracken, short game on the play. Coach Bowen said, hey, you know, we need to control the clock. We need to make sure we don't force things. Last week the run game was there, and hopefully it will be this week. But so far, Bear River said, yeah, we saw that run game last week. We're going to put eight, nine guys up in the box. And there they are again. Now Logan's going to give it to Thornley. Going the other way, and he's got real estate. Thornley into Bear River's half of the field. 16 yards and a first down. So Logan said, or yeah, Logan says, all right, if you're going to come after us that hard, we'll get you going one way and head the other. And Bear River, it's sold out, chasing it one way, and when they flipped it back the other way, there was nobody home. Mason motions, in, motions into the backfield. Turn and give to Bracken. Bracken's got a hole off tackle and he has five, six yards. Skyview leads Ridgeline 6 0 in the second quarter. Skyview scored and Ridgeline blocked the extra point. So Ridgeline, after losing a couple of games early, have been on a little bit of a winning streak here. Second and four. Thornley in motion. Fake the give to him. Pawn has it tapped away. Boy, they are setting up the screen to Mason. He had a couple of blockers out there. And a good job by the Bear River defender to get up and get some hands on that, or that might have been a big gain for the Grizzlies. Game of inches. Mountain Crest leads Green Canyon 7 0. Pawn delivers. First down on third and four. Seven yards to Odd. And the first completion in a bit. 
for Pong. He had started four for four, and he's only hit one of his last five. He's now five of ten. New set of downs, turn and give. Picking and choosing. A gap is Mason. Mason with a three yard gain. The Bear River coming out early in this game and putting a bunch of guys up near the line of scrimmage. Trying to take away that Logan run game. Logan responding by throwing the ball a little bit more. Ten passes here in the first quarter. They only passed it five times the entire game against Skyview. Here they get it out to Thornley. Olsen blocking for him. Thornley trying to find an, an opening and he's got two yards and that'll be the end of the first quarter. 14 to three, Bear River leads Logan. You're watching the game of the week on the Valley Channel. KSM Music is one of our sponsors of the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. They're your full service music store. If you are an aspiring singer or you just like to play, they have open mic jams down there for customers in the store. They give lessons, guitar, bass, drums, ukulele, piano. They have band and orchestra rentals as well. They service and repair. They have pro audio equipment rentals. Music is all they do at KSM Music. KSM means music, it's in our name. KSM Music, the Game of the Week sponsor. As we come back, Bear River leads 14 to three, beneficiaries of a turnover inside the five yard line to help with that lead. 61 yards rushing. 19 yards passing in that first quarter for Bear River. Logan on the move and trying to find the end zone. It's third down, and they're gonna run it with Mason against that heavy front, and they're gonna gain a yard. And I don't know if they thought maybe they would catch Bear River off guard by running it, but it was third down and five. They gained a yard. And you're in that spot where, yeah, you're probably going to go for it on fourth down and four. Eighty-six total yards in the first quarter for Logan, but only three points to show for it. See if Bear River's bringing heat. They're bringing five. Thornley, first down. <laughs> Nine yards on fourth down and four. Thirty-nine yards on five catches for Thornley. So a big conversion as the Grizzlies trail fourteen to three and trying to get back into this ball game. Here's Bracken with the give still on his feet, pushing forward. That's a pretty good run by Bracken. Down to the 11 yard line, six yards and most of it after contact. Four carries, 15 yards for Bracken and now Logan running with pace. Handed off to Bracken again. Bracken stuffed at the line of scrimmage, bounces off to his left. And picks up about three more. So the Grizzlies with another third down. Third and two. Bracken in the backfield. They had they averaged like five yards per on the quarterback keeper last week. And that's about how many they get on this one on third and short. Pawn with five yards, and it's first and goal for the Grizzlies. They trail 14 to three, looking to get back into this ball game. Need to see who's in the backfield right now with Bracken. It is not Mason. Oh, it's Lang, okay. 
Turn and give to Bracken. He's got a space off tackle. Turn the corner into the end zone. Touchdown, Logan. Five yards and a cloud of dust for Ethan Bracken. Six carries, 23 yards, and a touchdown. Morales puts it up and in, and it's 14 to 10 at Crimson Field. 9:44 to play in the first half. There's a lot of things that people just don't want to do. I think number one on that list might be going to the dentist. But Aspen Dental is trying to change some minds. They really want for you to feel completely comfortable in your office. Personalized dentistry is their goal. They've got TVs, water bottles, blankets, and pillows to help you feel right at home. They do general dentistry, cosmetic. They've got the Invisalign implants or orthodontics. They do it all. Patients keep coming back to Aspen Dental. Aspen Dental. One of our Game of the Week on the Valley Channel sponsors. So the Grizzlies had a good looking first possession and all they got was a field goal out of it. Then they turned the ball over on their second possession and Bear River took advantage to go up 14-3. And now on their third possession, the Grizzlies pick up a fourth down and a couple of third and a third down and put it in the end zone. And now it's a 14 to 10 ball game with 9.44 to play in the half and Bear River will start on their own 20 yard line. Bear River fresh off allowing 43 points to a Green Canyon offense that struggled to put points on the board this season. Has let Logan put the yards up, but they've held him to 10 points so far in this half. Meanwhile, Jones is running pretty well with the football himself. 12 yards for Jones. He's got 63 yards on six carries, so 10.3 per carry for Jones. One of them, that 37-yard touchdown run. And they give it to the motion man. He tries to turn the corner. The Grizzlies stretch it out, and Marble picks up a couple. Talon Marble with two carries and nine yards. Eighty yards for... Bear River in that first quarter to go with 14 points. Logan's forced one punt. Jepson tosses it out there. It's complete to Marble, and Marble goes down after picking up six. Sorry with the tackle and now a timeout called by Logan. Logan's gonna kind of talk about this one a little. The Grizzlies have forced one punt, so three possessions. This is the fourth for Bear River. Three possessions for the Bears. Touchdown, punt, touchdown. That second touchdown, remember, came after the interception and it was a three yard drive for a touchdown. Bear River punched it in on the quarterback run. Grizzlies wanting to try to figure things out, not give up any more points, obviously, as they trail by four. Logan will get the ball to start the second half. But right now, they need to figure out a way to slow down the Bay River offense. First and 10 at their own 43-yard line. Bear River 
so used to them running a more of a power run game. Now their new coaching staff and running that spread. Here's the give to Jones. He, boy, he's got a big hole. He runs forward for eight. I mean, that was a huge hole. Against that three-man front. Bear River. Now they're pulling the guard and the tackle. Jones follows him. And Bodie Rudd read those pullers. He followed him. Came down the line of scrimmage and made the tackle for no gain from Jones. And that's what you're supposed to do if you're that defensive lineman, right? Those guys are both going to pull the G&T pull, follow them down the line, they'll lead you right to the ball carrier. Third down and two. Jepson's going to keep it. Nobody's home around the edge, and Jepson gets down inside the 40-yard line. 11 yards for Jepson on third and two. He ran that RPO. And nobody was home on that edge. And they ran it so quickly. I think the DN kind of came up. And he didn't even know where the ball was. He turned around looking. Give it to Jones. Jones running near side. He's taken down by Connor Peters. Peters the sophomore, no gain. So after running for 71 yards on seven carries, Jones is now nine carries and 71 yards. He's a long and lanky running back back there behind Jepson. He's gonna stay in and block on the throw. Jepson unloads, he's got a man wide open. Touchdown! I don't know where Brock Brown was, but he wasn't anywhere near. The receiver, Olsen. And it was a perfect ball by Jepson. 38 yards. One of the Logan coaching staff throws his clipboard up in the air when that happened. <laughs> He hung it up there and gave his receiver plenty of time to run under it. And I didn't see it the first of the play if the defensive back was looking into the backfield and thinking it was a run or something because he was, he was chasing and he was a long way behind. PAT up and good. 21-10 with 7.03 to play in the half. Bear River strikes again. Are you a DIYer? There's so many do-it-yourselfers out there. If you are a DIYer and you've got a fence type of project, let Custom Fence help you. They'll supply good advice and the right materials to help you DIY it right. That's Custom Fence, a Game of the Week sponsor. Well, two explosives by Bear River in this first half. Explosives are plays of over 20 yards. They've got a 38-yard touchdown throw and a 37-yard touchdown run. And they lead 21-10 over the Grizzlies of Logan. That one finally bounds into the end zone. The Grizzlies looking for something defensively to try to slow down this Bear River offense. They forced a punt early. But it's been four possessions, three touchdowns for Bear River. Logan turning it over once deep in their own territory that led to one of those touchdowns. And that's part of the difference in that ball in this ball game. Pond steps out of pressure. He's got running room. He keeps it alive and goes downfield looking for Thornley. Thornley catches it at the 40. It's a foot race. 
pulled down at the 25. And he's not feeling great as he got horse collared there. 55 yards, 65 yards, he's down to the 15. Hundred and four yards now for Thornley, receiving here in this first half. Pawn could have run the ball. Instead, he kept his eyes downfield. Thornley took off and he hit him in stride. Bracken looking for something. And he picks up maybe a yard. You know, there's the first explosive play of the game for Logan. A 65 yarder as they flip the field. And the Grizzlies with six minutes to play in the first half trying to keep up with a Bear River offense that's humming. Oh, out of the backfield, Lang had it and had a running room and he fought the ball and dropped it. Third and nine. Lang had it in his hands, and then he didn't catch it clean, and you see that so often. You're, that, you, it hits you, you're not clean, and then you kind of get in a hurry. You're like, oh crap, I gotta secure this, I'm gonna get hit. And then you end up kind of fighting against the ball. That's the best way to describe it. And then it ends up bouncing out of your hands. And he had some running room. And he's a big, thick kid. He might have been able to run some guys over. Pawn. You're running the out and up. Thornley can't get there. So Logan now three of six on third downs and Morales is gonna trot out onto the field. A 31 yarder to try to cut the Bear River lead to eight. He punches that one through, plenty of leg. And it's 21-13, Logan with 5.25 to play in the half. You're watching the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. Every week we talk about Dr. Paul Danes at Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology about how great he is, but don't just take it from me. Let's hear from one of his patients, a patient named Carolyn. Here's what she had to say about Dr. Danes. Dr. Paul Danes was so amazing as he worked with me for two hours to help me get my substantial hearing loss under control and get my hearing to a level that I could hear the best I could. I would highly recommend this doctor to anyone who's looking for a very knowledgeable, competent, and compassionate person to help get you in an appropriate hearing aid that is the best there is and at a very reasonable price. That's from one of Dr. Dane's patients, Dr. Paul Dane's board certified audiologist and one of our game sponsors, Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology. This kick goes out of the back of the end zone and Bear River now will get another crack at it offensively and they've been moving the ball well every time they've touched it. Again, the big difference in this ball game, a turnover. The Grizzlies threw an interception inside their own five yard line. Bear River turned it into a touchdown. And that's really the difference in this ball game. That the Grizzlies getting a couple of field goals instead of touchdowns. And they've been down inside the 20 yard line once and came away with only three and to about the 24 and came away with only three. Bear Rivers moved the ball well every time they've had it offensively. Jones picks up three. Jones averaging almost seven and a half yards per carry. Three far side, one near side, and Jones switches sides behind Jepson. Jepson, a lot of time. 
Now he unloads. Two Grizzlies there and a fight for the ball and it looks like Bear River comes up with it. It's Olsen again. Thirty-six yards. A hundred and six yards on three catches for Olson, and there were two defenders there. Jepson, nobody home on that left side, and Jepson has run it a couple of times for good yardage. They found something there that they keep attacking. Jepson going downfield P.I. There it is. Man, these Bear River receivers are just running past the Logan secondary, a Logan secondary that's been very good this year. And I don't know if they're getting caught up looking for the run game and, or what's going on, but every time you look up and they're throwing the ball, the Logan defenders are chasing not running with. Second penalty of the game on Logan. And Bear River once again in scoring position. Just like that. And the Bears moving it at will against this Logan defense. Now they've walked another man up as Logan. They give it to Jones and then they try that Right side, and again, they just collapse it. And Jones picking up big yardage. He's got 15. Logan's going to have to try something else. On that right side of their defense, they are just getting crushed. They run hardly anything. Bear, has Bear River this way, this direction. They've all they've run it to their offensive left so many times. Now I say that they'll come this way. Well, they're going to bounce the other way. There's Jepson inside the five, down to the one yard line. So as good as the Logan defense was last week. They're struggling this week against a one and four Bear River team. I was talking to Coach Bowen about building upon good things and that's what he was hoping for, for this young and inexperienced team that they could build on what happened last week and not get fat and happy. Jepson fakes it, takes off and guess which way he went, yeah. Around that right end of the defense, the offense's left side, nobody touched him. Touchdown from a yard out. That's two rushing touchdowns for Jepson and Bear River playing with a ton of confidence. They've punted once. Every other possession has been a touchdown. The Grizzlies have turned it over once. And they've scored a touchdown and two field goals. The Grizzlies are gonna have to start scoring touchdowns. They wanna get back in this ball game. Kick is up, kick is good. 28-13, Bear River on top of Logan. You're watching the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. Hey, how do you hoo ha? Do you like a lot of meat? Are you vegetarian? No gluten? You on that low-carb diet? you like things a little more mild or do you like it really spicy? That's the great thing about Hoo Hot down on 660 South Main. You decide how to Hoo Hot open for dine-in, carry-out, pick-up and delivery. Whatever you feel like, build your own at Hoo Hot, one of our Game of the Week sponsors. So Bear River, not looking like a one and four football team. 
Logan really struggling defensively here in this first half after playing so well last week against Skyview. They've had no answers for the Bears. Here's the kick and there's some room up the middle, out to about the 30 yard line. Goes Thornley. Looked like he had a big lane there and it closed down in a hurry, but he takes it out to the 31. And that's where the Logan offense will start. So Logan has an opportunity here. If they can put points on the board on this drive, they also get the ball back to start the second half which means they, that could get them right back into this ball game. But a lot depends on this drive right here. An early turnover for the Grizzlies led to some real trouble for him. Pawn, boy, he, I don't know what was going on there. He stood back there and he, that was, that was strange. He didn't look like he knew what he wanted to do with it. I wonder if it was a broken play in the first sack of the game as he's taken down for six. Uh, yeah, he got back there, he, and then he's kind of like looking around. He, the way he was holding the ball, it wasn't trying to throw it. It almost looked like he almost dropped it. It was. That was an odd look. I'm not sure what happened there, whether it was just that, you know, was that a broken play and he was expecting something else and just wasn't sure what to do. Bear River takes a timeout after that play and why wouldn't they? They've got three timeouts if they, if they take them here, if they hold Logan down and they get the ball back. Logan defensively has only forced Bear River to punt once in this first half. There's 2.10 to play in the first half in a 28 to 13 ball game. Not sure why the clock is running. They called a timeout. Now they ran it down to 2.02 and stopped it. Now they're running it again. Here's Mason turning the corner. He's got a blocker. And then he steps out of bounds. After picking up, you know, he started that back at what, the 23 yard line, he got out to the 35, 12 yards for Mason, who after 30 plus carries last week, that's his first carry, or his fourth carry, pardon me, tonight. Now it's third down and six. Three of six on third down, they're gonna pitch it to him again. And Bear River's there, they've been loading up for the run the whole half. And that was third down, man. Logan hurried. Like they hurried that play up. Mason stepped out of bounds at the end of the run, stopped the clock. Then they came up the line and hurried the play and they've, they've been trying to run pace, you know, run some tempo. So I can, I get that, but. They ran those two plays and they, and they only ran 23 seconds, 25 seconds off the clock. So now they're gonna give the ball back to Bear River. With, you know, probably close to a minute and a half left. And Bear River's just doing whatever they want in this ball game. Well, that was a, that was tough for the Grizzlies. They had that good run by Mason, but you got to remember on first down, it took a big sack. And even though he had a 12 yard run, it still was fourth and six. Thornley kicks it away. And that's going to go out of bounds at the 23 yard line with one minute and 30 seconds to play in the half and two timeouts under their belt. The Bears take the field. Logan defensively. They really have a big task right here. I just, it's weird to say with 1.30 to play in, a, in the first half, but this drive could be the ball game. If the Grizzlies give up a touchdown on this drive right here, 
right before the half. They could be in serious trouble. Four man front, one linebacker. They've got everybody else spread out. Jepson breaks the pocket. He got a little bit of help as one of his linemen had his arm around the neck and head of one of the defensive linemen of Logan. We've seen that a couple of times tonight on both sides of the ball, though. Times when we thought it was a hold for sure. I remember one Logan player saw that, and they just haven't called that. They called one holding call tonight, I believe, and that was against Bear River. Jepson steps out of bounds, 123 to play, second and seven. Jepson's going to hand it off on a comeback play, just kind of a little inside handoff as he rolled one way, again trying to get the defense going one way and then coming back the other way. And Jones ran into his own lineman and it ended up being a loss. Even with that loss, Jones has 86 yards rushing on 12 carries. A timeout on the field. Skyview leading in their ball game. 9-0 against Ridgeline. That one's at the half, and we're a minute 16 away from the half here at Crimson Field. A few miles up the road. And a huge third down for Logan anyway. It's third and nine. Logan's got to figure out a way to get off the field and not give up another big play. Two deep safeties for the Grizzlies. Four down linemen and man coverage look. Jepson unloads, they're going downfield again. And Jepson just overthrows his receiver. Lazari doing a good job of running with him, that was Alan Lazari, number one. Roberts was the intended receiver, now it's fourth and nine for the Bears. And remember, Jepson's their punter. So he can either throw it or kick it. You gotta play it straight up if you're the defense. Is that Mason that they've got playing deep? They're gonna kick it. The coach over on the sideline given the kick motion. And Jepson boots it and they kick it away from Mason. And it bounds out of bounds. At the 36 yard line. You remember the last time they punted they did that and it they punted away from the punt returner and you know, Mason kind of made a halfway effort just like that to kind of go over and get it. And I get that. You don't necessarily want him to go try to field that one disaster can happen then but then it bounced and it kept bouncing and it kept going and Mason just kind of let it go and again it would have been a hard pickup for him but it ends up rolling down to the three yard line and then two plays later Logan throws an interception at the five so Logan gets out of there without giving up another score and Thornley goes in motion throwing underneath the Thornley Gets it at midfield, steps out of bounds after a 14, 16, 17 yard gain. Hundred and twenty-two yards receiving for Thornley. Hundred and thirty-nine yards throwing for Pond. But he threw that one interception. Looking for a chance to make amends on that one. Throwing near side, making a man miss, and then reaching out is Odd. Odd picks up 11, his second catch of the night. Ten of 17 for Pawn. Fifty seconds to play, no timeouts. We're in the first half. No timeouts for the Grizzlies. They trail 28-13. Bond over the middle, he's got Thornley. Thornley still on the move. Thornley goes down, the clock stops on the first down. 
12 yards. And they spike it and stop the clock. So the Grizzlies haven't had trouble moving the ball, but they've had trouble finishing tonight. This is the third time they've got it down inside the Bear River 25 yard line. And they've scored one touchdown, kicked a couple of field goals. They trail 28 13. Laying in the backfield. They throw the little out pattern, does Pond. Boy, that's a long throw. He's throwing that from this near hash all the way to the sideline, and he one hopped it there. Now it's going to be third and 10. That's a tough. That's a tough pass to throw right there. Third and 10. Three of seven on third downs. Bear River now with that end line behind you there. They don't have as much real estate you have to cover as a defense. That's, that's one kind of plus, right? As the field shortens up, it helps you defensively. Pond's in trouble, down he goes. Lang made a block, but the defensive player came off the block and Pond was late getting out of the pocket and he brought him down for a two yard loss. And it's fourth down, they're gonna try a field goal from 40 yards. 10 seconds and the clock runs. Snaps too high. Morales gets on it. And there's a flag because Bear River dived on top of Morales after he was down. And there was four or five seconds left on the clock. So that's gonna be a penalty on Bear River. And the coaching staff for Bear River ran out there to the player that did that and met him. And by <laughs> judging by that player's reaction, what, uh, what he was told was not awesome. It was not awesome job. So that'll back Bear River up 15 yards. Because they'd blown it dead and then Bear River, a player was chasing the ball around and head first dived onto the pile there. And they're calling it a personal foul on Bear River. And where it's after the play, if it's post possession, then Bear River gets the ball and it doesn't go from the original line of scrimmage. Four seconds left, Bear River is going to take a knee and we're going to head to the half. 28 13. Logan trailing Bear River in the battle of the Bears and the Grizzlies. You're watching the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. selections of fresh flowers. They're family owned and been in business for a long time and they make you feel like part of the family. Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology. At Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology, we believe in a very thorough hearing test. Do you hear ringing noises? Does any member of your family have hearing loss? Do you have frequent or severe headaches? Any numbness in your face or fingertips? Do loud sounds hurt your ears? Were you in the military? Have you ever had your hearing tested before? 
No, I have not. Say the word mousetrap. Say the word baseball. Say the word airplane. Say the word cowboy. It also told us if you had a hope I was able to make the words in the rest of the Okay. Bring back what you've been missing. Bring back Cash Valley hearing and audiology. Your password is password and everything you own is gray, Mike. I thought you liked Basic Mike. That was before I had Wendy's made to crave chicken sandwiches. Now I know I can do better than Basic. Upgrade from Basic with three new sandwiches on Wendy's Made to Crave menu. The barbecue chicken sandwich, avocado BLT chicken sandwich, and the sauce and bacon chicken sandwich. At Wendy's, we got you. You need to take a long drive at exactly the speed limit. I want to succeed in athletics, but I also want to succeed in school, and I also want to help my family and my community. And so I think through being balanced and juggling all these things, it leads me to fulfill those wants and then be happier because of it. In order to have a, you know, a fulfilling and well-rounded life, you have to do a lot of different things. She goes to her classes, and she does her sports. I don't really know how she does it. <laughs> I mean, she goes to every day, which is like a smile on her face. I think everyone can have a drive, but it's the people that actually choose to feed this hunger are the people that stand out. Your hunger to win has to be bigger than anybody else's. If she sets her mind to it, she's going to accomplish it, and I have no doubt about that. Whether it's she needs to drop three seconds on her time, she needs to get a better grade on her math test. Bill is just one of those people who, whenever like, I see you do anything, you always have this drive. There is a drive there that comes from wanting to be everything that her mom set in motion in the first 13 years of her life. My mom was one of my closest friends, so she had such an immense impact and influence on my life that when she died, my whole world was kind of turned around. She was heartbroken, as you would imagine. She knew she had all these little ones looking to her. She was only 12 years old, but she became the person who was handling it. I'm trying my best, I guess. It's been hard. She was such a big part of my life, but I'm doing the best I can. She's a beautiful runner. It's just amazing to watch her run. She's a tremendous sister, tremendous daughter, caring soul, remarkably proud of Jillian. Like she has so much responsibility in her life. It's also amazing that she does it with such like humility and grace. When you lose your mom and your sister, you realize how precious every day is and you want to make the most of every day. Right? You sort of set high goals for yourself and you sort of work to achieve them. Sheer will and I don't know, passion and I don't know, but to get themselves there quicker than anybody else, to reach down deep, push through that pain, that both mental pain where you just want to stop, you want to give up, and that physical pain where your legs and your muscles are screaming and just get yourself there. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Wendy's of Cash Valley. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology. Bring back what you have been missing. Palmer Home Furnishings. Our low overhead means higher quality at lower prices. Aspen Dental. Get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. Custom Fence Company. Privacy, security, peace of mind. Rich's Cars and Credit. Good guys you can trust. Anderson Seed and Garden. Growing better gardeners. The Logo Shop. We logo stuff. All kinds of stuff. KSM means music. Music is all we do. Factory Pizzeria. We're open late after the game. And the Valley Channel. Cash Valley's TV station for over 30 years. Back at Crimson Field and a beautiful evening has turned into a cool night here 
in Logan, just a couple of blocks off of Main Street downtown. It's Logan trails Bear River, 28-13. Eric Olson along with you as we get set for the second half. It's only a two-score ball game, and Bear River really felt like they dominated that first half. But when you look at the statistics, I, I was surprised. Both of these teams have the exact same amount of yards. Bear River's been finishing their drives, and Logan hasn't. That's been the difference. So Logan's going to pick this one up at the 20, return it out to the 30, and that's where the Grizzlies will start. They've been driving the ball and moving the ball at the Grizzlies. They just haven't been putting it in the end zone, and Bear River has. 63 yards rushing for the Grizz, 162 yards passing for 225 total yards for Bear River, 126 yards rushing, 99 yards passing for 225 yards. In the first quarter, the Grizzlies with 86 yards, 139 in the second quarter. Again, they just didn't put it in the end zone. They had a chance at a field goal attempt late in the half, and then they ended up snapping it over the head of the holder, and that ended the half. And Here's Mason bouncing it off his hands before he finally pulls it in and picks up about seven. So Pond, 169 yards, having a not a bad game. He's got that one stain on the on the stats with that interception that he threw inside his own five-yard line, his fifth of the season. Thornley goes in motion, they hand it to Bracken. So they try some misdirection and Bracken still pressing forward out to the 49 yard line. He's got 12 yards and he had a lineman in front of him. And he just put his hand in that lineman's back and they both rumbled down the field to the 49 yard line, a pickup of 12 and a first down. Grizzlies need to do something with this first possession if they want to try to keep pace with this hot Bear River offense. Bracken turns the corner again, cuts inside, and a touchdown possibly saving tackle out there on the edge. Another 12-yard run. <laughs> 58 yards on nine carries for Bracken, and the Grizzlies playing with a little bit more urgency in this first possession of the second half than maybe they showed in that first half. They didn't play poorly. They just, again, they, they moved up and down the field, but they didn't finish. Let's see if they can do that here in the second. And once again, nine guys in the box for Bear River. Give it to Bracken on the quick hitter. Bracken following Tupo. And he's got another big run, 14 yards this time. <laughs> 10 carries, 72 yards for Bracken. 38 of them on these three opening three carries here of this third quarter. And the Grizzlies move it deep into Bear River territory again. Here they pull guys and Mason. He got tripped up as he hit the, the gap, or he might have gotten more. He still gets seven. 27 yards on five carries for Mason as the Grizzlies threw the ball 20 times, 19 times in the first half. They've thrown it 20 times in the game. Ran it 16 times. And they've come out running the ball here. Now they're going to throw it. Olsen, Reed Olsen, the tight end, looking for the end zone. Touchdown. <laughs> 20 yards. Capping off a good looking drive by the Grizzlies to start this second half. Olsen with his first catch of the night. Grizzly offense hitting on all cylinders on that drive. The PAT is up and good. 
And the Grizz back in it. They trail by a score, 28-20, with 9.34 to play in the third. Palmer Home Furnishings is one of our game sponsors. They're just up the road here in Providence, over there on the way to Ridgeline High School. They have all sorts of what you're looking for, recliners, sofas, sectionals. Man, they're the sectionals headquarters of Northern Utah. They've got dozens of brand. They've got mattresses. They've got adjustable base beds. They've got a little bit of everything. Palmer Home Furnishings, if you are in the market for some new furniture, check out what they've got at Palmer Home Furnishings, a Game of the Week sponsor. Nice opening drive by the Grizzlies as they march downfield and put it in the end zone, a 20-yard touchdown strike from Pond to Olsen. And it's a 28 to 20 ball game now. Bear River, see if their offense still has it going. As they did everything right offensively in that first half. See what adjustments maybe the Logan defense makes. Bear River 126 yards rushing in that first half and they really attacked the Logan, the right side of the Logan defensive line. And they flexed those defensive linemen out a little bit now, maybe trying to keep them from getting the reach out there. They're gonna go to the air on first down, or the Bears. Couple of yards and that's it. As the Grizzlies rally to the ball. Jepson's thrown for 101 yards with that one. Marble, two catches, eight yards. A Little bit of a breeze blowing here up at the top of the booth where we are. You look at the flag down at the north end and it's laying right against the pole. Second and 10. You're gonna do it again. Similar result, maybe another yard, three yards this time. Ballard on the reception. And now it's third down. Two of four on third downs for Bear River in that first half. As they come up to the line quickly. See if Logan sends some pressure. When Jepson got out of the pocket, he was a problem. They're gonna send four after him. Jepson unloads, has a man in his hands. Big gain again. It's marble all the way to the 35 yard line. 40 yards on third and five. I gotta, you know, I can't watch the whole field. I really would like to watch to be able to see what's going on with those defensive backs that those receivers are just running by them and they're two steps past them. I don't know if they're you know, if they're freezing on a play action or what, but they are, or maybe those Bear River kids are just fast as can be. The loss on first down. But the big play has been there all night for Bear River. 38, 36, and 40 yard completions as well as a 37 yard run. Give to Jones and he stopped for another loss. And it's Tupua. Tilose Tupua. Once again, making his presence felt. And it's third and 15. And a flag, Logan's offside, so it'll be third and 10. Three of five on third downs for Bear River. Skyview extends the lead against Ridgeline, 16-0 in the third quarter. Reports of the Bobcats' demise have been greatly exaggerated. Low snap, unloading, incomplete. 
Jepson put it right on his receiver. But the defensive back was also right on the receiver. He put it on him too and separated him from the ball. That was Ryan Lazari. Allen and Ryan, both juniors, playing corner. Fourth and 11, and Bear River moves. Logan came across the line, but the Bear River tackle got up out of his stance. And the flag on this near side, and the far side official also comes in. And they both had the same call. Bear River's fourth penalty of the night. They had one right at the end of the first half that didn't really have any bearing on anything. So now it's fourth and 15. Jepson is the punter. Nobody back for Logan. And Jepson takes a step back like he's going to kick it, and he is. He just punches it away. Boy, another great bounce. Oh, it almost gets to the end zone, but almost counts in what? Yeah, horseshoes and hand grenades. And they end up downing it about the one, maybe two yard line. So once again, the Grizzlies deep in their own territory. The last time it was a disaster when they had it down here this deep. Let's see if they can handle it a little bit better on this possession. 6.51 to play in the third quarter, an eight point ball game. Bear River leads 28-20. Logan with their second possession of the half. They scored on their first possession. They're going to run the sneak. They averaged five yards a carry on this play last week. They pick up a couple. Pond has been sacked once. And he's got minus one yard rushing on four carries. He got caught short of the line of scrimmage once. He Ran a sneak for five yards and just ran that sneak for a couple. Bear River just loading up against the run in the first half. Logan was 63 yards rushing in that first half. Look out, Pond gets it off first down. Out to the 15 yard line. 11 yards and a first down and a little bit of breathing room for the Grizzlies. That puts Pawn right at 200 yards. Thornley at 144. Pawn had a defender bearing down on him and he stood in there and delivered. They run the stretch play to Bracken, Bracken. Cuts it back inside, and he's taken down after a nine-yard gain. The running game is starting to click now for the Grizzlies. 11 carries, 81 yards for Bracken. Ball out to the 24-yard line, 5.20 to play in the third quarter. Logan trails 28-20. Looks like a run down to me, and they give it to Bracken, and Bracken's got a lane. Bracken on his feet. Bracken out to the 40-yard line. 16 yards for Ethan Bracken. 12 carries, 97 yards. Bracken had 34, 24 yards at the half. He's got 97 now. And they've been opening up some big holes for him, and again, Tight formation, they're gonna hand it to him again. Cuts it back inside and tripped up, picks up a yard. Marble takes him down. Second and nine for the Grizzlies. As they're out to the 41 yard line, this possession started at their own two. Three receivers wide to the far side, and they're going to pitch and run that way with Mason. Mason turns it up, and then he's yanked backwards after he picks up four. It'll be third and a short five. Mason's averaging five yards a carry, six carries, 31 yards. Third and a short five as the Grizzlies need 
just shy of the 50 yard line to keep this drive going. 3.48 to play in the third and the clock runs. And they're gonna go up top to Thornley. Thornley misses it. He threw it to his outside shoulder. He had a step and he couldn't haul it in. He reached out for it, it hit his boundary side hand and I just don't know if he couldn't find it. He couldn't locate it or what, but it looks like the Grizzlies will have to punt it away, but they get a good punt here. What they've done is they successfully flipped the field position. It ends up being a 43 yard drive. Punt fielded and returned up to about the 33 yard line. And boy, did that punt returner take a wallop. <laughs> Connor Peters, the freshman. I mean, he just kissed him, whack, face to face, and put him on the ground. And Bear River takes over, still leading 28-20. Three and a half to play in the third quarter. Ball on their own 27 yard line. Give to Jones, Jones with a big lane, look out! Mason can't catch him. Touchdown, 73 yards. Nobody even touched him. You could have dro driven a truck through the hole that they opened. Logan had kind of flexed out their line a little bit to try to look like they'd maybe try to not be able to get those reach blocks against them to till the end. All right, well, we'll just swing the gate from the inside. And it was straight up the middle for 73 yards and a touchdown for Jones. PAT's up and good, and it's 35 to 20. Bear River leads Logan with 3.20 to play in the third. Hey, where do you old grist mill? Do you old grist mill at work? Do you old grist mill on a hike? At the lake, skiing, at the ball game, wherever you go, you can old grist mill. The first specialty bread store in Cache Valley. Now there's two Logan locations, as well as one in Smithville. Baked fresh daily. And the not sold items are donated to charity from the old grist, grist mill. If you remember when bread was made naturally, well, the old grist mill still does it. You don't have to remember it. You just go on in there and get it. You're not sure what kind of get? Go on in and try a free slice. Old Chris Mill, the Game of the Week sponsor. Yeah, Logan had trimmed that lead to 28-20. They'd flip the field. And then in one play, Bear River gets that lead back. The big play's been there all night for Logan. Coach Bowen with, talked about that with me before, just saying they, they played well in their losses but they just gave up too many big plays. They'd have a breakdown and give up a big play and it ends up biting them. And that's what's happened here tonight. These last few games against Bear River for Logan, well, ever since Coach Bowen took over, that's what he told me, they've all been decided by four points or less. So a two touchdown game like this one has been a rarity. They've been close ball games. Let's see if the Logan offense can keep up. They've been playing catch up the whole game. Pond caught again. He keeps getting caught by the same guy. Pond keeps stepping out of the pocket. To the same side right into the hands of, well, he's, he's not on the roster. Number 74, he's spun him down a couple of times. He got back to the line of scrimmage, did Pond. But they've gotten the block on him and kind of kicked him out and then Pond steps through and he kind of hesitated. And that's what he's done both times. You know, he's looking downfield trying to make the play instead of just deciding to take off. That's 
you see him do the same thing there. He, he's always trying to make that play downfield. And some quarterbacks, you see him just take off, right? And Pond, it looks to me like he's wanting to make that throw downfield and taking off might be secondary. Three yards for Pond. The other thing is, you sure can see a lot more stuff up here than you can down there <laughs> with the guy breathing in your face. Pawn sets up. Nobody home. Now he's going to unload. Thornley running free, and he misses it right off his hands. And you don't see that often. It was on the ends of his fingers, but he should have caught it, and he knows it. If he catches that on the run, he probably scores. And there's your difference tonight. I mean, Bear Rivers made those plays. Logan hasn't. The big play has been there for the Bears. Logan has one or two, but they've missed on a couple in a game of inches. Now Thornley has to sprint back to come punt it. Punts this one away. It was kind of bobbled a little bit, but then brought in and returned up to the 41-yard line. And that's where Bear River will take over, leading by two scores, 35 to 20. 2-11 to play in this third quarter. Last time Bear River had the ball, a one play, 73 yard drive. A touchdown run by Jones that put him over 150 yards for the night. 10 yards of carry for Jones. They'll give it to Jones again. And he picks up five. And off the title, Jones. Second down by 40 yards. Second down by Logan has just not been able to slow down that Bear River run game. Bear River not looking like a team that's one and four. Their one win against Clearfield is just a not a good team. Every year, they just can't get it going there in Clearfield. Give it to Jones again. Jones grab, but pulls the tackler for another five yards and another first down. Clearfield's one of those programs is down there surrounded by Northridge and Syracuse and a lot of those kids, you know, there's a lot of kids should be going to Clearfield that are going to Syracuse and, and even some to Northridge and for whatever reason, Clearfield just can't get the program going down there. Here's Jones again, just running free into the secondary. And off the title goes, brought down by Brock Brown, first down there. 15 yards for Jones. He's going for 200 tonight. And Jones is, he's a little slow getting up. And he's making his way to the sideline. Jepson rolls to the near side. Looks underneath, ball's incomplete. Second down. When you talk about the big play, you talk about those explosives, Jepson, they've had two explosives in this quarter already, a 73-yard run and a 40-yard pass. Jepson's thrown a 38-yard pass and a 36-yard pass, one of those for a touchdown. There's also been a 37-yard touchdown run. Jepson on second down, he's in trouble, and Kaimani Lane gets home. 11 yard loss for Jepson as Kaimani Lane times it just right and comes and gets it. Grizzlies get to him for the first time on a pass play tonight, and it brings up third and many. They've got to get down to the 24 yard line or at the 45, it's 21. Third and 21, in fact, they've got to get further than that. They've got to get between the 
23 in the 24. That's going to be the end of the third quarter. Bear River on top, 35-20 over Logan as we head to the fourth. Hey, do you like Wendy's? Boy, I sure do. And you know they got the fry war, the fast food fry war. That, that thing heats up every so often. And right now, Wendy's, they've redone their fries. They're hot and crispy. And they did a little taste test and where they were, they found out that those fries were preferred nearly two to one over the nearest competitor. And you know who that, who that was. And you, everybody loves their fries, but go, go give them a try. The new hot and crispy fries at Wendy's and the French toast sticks as well. One of those new breakfast items. I love the Wendy's breakfast. It's a little bit different, right? Their breakfast sandwiches, a little bit different. They're a nice change of pace. Wendy's, one of our Game of the Week sponsors. We go to the fourth quarter. 35-20. Both teams scoring a touchdown. It's third and 21, but the big play's been no problem for the Bears. Here's Riker Jepson looking for that first down. He's got a lot of that 21 back. He got about 17, so it's going to be fourth and four. I would imagine they'd go for it now. He needed 21, he got 17 just on a quarterback run. He broke the pocket and took off. Nobody f free downfield. Logan, if you're Logan, you do not want to be off sides and give him a free first down. Five seconds on the play clock. Jepson misses. Logan football. Jepson threw it a little bit behind his intended receiver. And the Grizzlies take over as Bear River turns it over on downs at the Logan 27 yard line. Grizzlies trailing 35 to 20. They had cut it 28 20 with a good looking touchdown drive on their first possession of this second half. And on their second possession, they moved the ball. Clear out to the 43 yard line, almost the 45 actually, before they before they uh, were stopped and they started at their own two. But then Jones with a 73 yard touchdown run. Put Bear River back up by two scores. Give it to Bracken. He turns the corner, makes guy miss, gets a first down and more. Fourteen yards for Bracken, and he has 112 on the night. The running game has been there in this second half. 63 yards at halftime, so it wasn't horrible, but it wasn't like we saw last week. They're going to give it again to Bracken. Bracken into a pile, and he picks up a couple. Hundred and sixty-nine yards rushing as a team now for Logan. Two hundred yards through the air, so you know three hundred and sixty-nine total yards, and we've just started the fourth quarter. You can see Logan's moved the ball; they just haven't finished drives, and they've missed on a couple of big plays that were inches away. Here they go underneath to Olson. It's nearly picked as it goes through his hands. I say underneath, he was about the 50 yard line. He was in first down territory, it's third and eight. Every play big now for the Grizzlies. They can't have wasted possessions trailing by two scores against a team whose offense they haven't really been able to button up tonight. They've only forced Bear River to punt twice. Logan, three of nine on third downs. Throwing a little out pattern to Thornley, and he drops it again. He dropped one that would arguably a long touchdown on the last possession, and he drops that one. 
They maybe need to see about getting him something, just a little quick hitter to get the ball in his hands and get his head back up again. As good as, as good as he is, those things can get in your noggin. Thornley steps into this one. Kicks it away. It's fielded at the 16-yard line and hit immediately out there. He's the return man. He falls forward for a couple yards. And Bear River will start inside their own 20-yard line. This might be their worst starting field position of the night. Three receivers to the near side for Bear River. Skyview continues to build on their lead against Ridgeline. 23-0. Skyview just owns the River Hawks. Last year, Ridgeline got them, and they got them big, but I think Skyview's beat them four out of the last five times. Jepson picks up 10 yards. So the Grizzlies tried to make some adjustments to take away that edge. It was the right side of their defensive line that Bear River kept attacking. Then Bear River was opening up holes up the middle. So now they've gone back to a more traditional look. And they just attack that edge again. They're just getting, it looks like they were getting a guy out on a reach block and they're just doing a pretty good job are those offensive linemen for Bear River. That time the Logan defensive line only gives up a yard. Jones with 118, or 178, pardon me, yards rushing. Second and nine. As the clock slips under nine minutes to play in the ball game, a two score lead for Bear River, 35 to 20. High scoring affair here at Crimson Field. Jepson's just gonna keep it. Jones the lead blocker. Jepson turns the corner, it's gonna be third down. As Jepson, let's see where they spot it. Is there a flag? There is a flag on that far sideline. Jepson picked up about four, four yards. And there's a flag right at the line of scrimmage, holding on Bear River. That's only the second holding penalty of the night. Both of them on Bear River. I've seen plenty of that going on from both teams tonight. That's just not one they've called a lot this evening. So now it's second and 19. Jepson back to throw. No pressure. Now the pressure comes. Jepson. Unloads it, nearly picked, and then nearly caught. Kaimani Lang climbed the ladder to try to get a hold of that, but he needed a couple more rungs. Jepson's eight of 13 for 144 yards and a touchdown. He's got almost 120 of those yards on three passes. Here's the delay to Jones. One of the linemen for Logan stayed home, sniffed it out. No, it was Lang coming up from that linebacker position. Lang didn't tackle him, but he got a hold of him and gave his teammates enough time to get there, and it ends up being a one-yard loss. And now it'll be fourth and 20. Cooper Red back to receive. Actually, two safeties back now. Oh, that one hit one of the up linemen. And Kaimani Lang, with a smart play, he waves for a fair catch and just pulls it out of the sky at the 23 yard line. And the Grizzlies will take over there. Wow, 
That's equivalent to a turnover, even though it's not technically one that goes in the scorebooks that way. The Grizzlies now taking over at their opponent's 23-yard line with 7.50 to play. They need to put it in the end zone. One safety back for Bear River. Pond rolling away, looking underneath, throws it wide of his intended receiver. Andrew Crookston on the pattern there, his first target tonight. Twenty-three six Skyview leads Ridgeline at the end of the third, and Skyview is on the Ridgeline ten yard line again, looking to put more points up. Oh, the snap gets past Pond, and then he just lays on it. He he goes past it. I he wasn't even looking. I think it was snapped while Pond was trying to do something else. And oh my goodness. Sixteen yard loss. It's going to go against Pond, but that's one you'd want to maybe put against the center because Pond stepped out from, he was looking to the sideline, and the center snapped the ball. Two by two on the receivers, third down and 26. Pond steps up, has time delivers an interception. He threw it underneath and this one has a chance to go the other way. He's knocked out of bounds at the 30 yard line as Pond threw it underneath. There's a flag back at the 43. And Coach Bowen is out talking to the officials about something. The officials shaking his head night. And and I don't know if that's a flag on a hold or an illegal block or a sideline warning, but let's see. But the Grizzlies with a golden opportunity as they take over at the Bear River 23. They have a bad snap that goes clear back to the 40 and then Pond throws his second interception of the night. Coach Bowen was having a animated discussion with one of the officials about something. It's a hold on Bear River, so that'll back them up to about the 32, 33 yard line. But the Grizzlies running out of chances. Bear River scored first in this ball game. On their first possession of the game, they marched right down the field, put it in the end zone. Logan answered with a field goal, it was 7-3. Logan forced a punt and then Bear River Intercepted a Logan pass at the five yard line, punched it into the end zone. It was 14 to three. It was 28 13 at the half, and Logan closed to 28 20 in the third. And Bear River put another and touchdown up. Now Logan just had a golden opportunity, and they squandered it. Bear River with the ball back in a four yard game. Pond with 15 of 26, 200 yards and a touchdown, but he's thrown those two interceptions. Here's Jepson cutting it back inside and he is hauled down by the neck. After he picks up a couple, he picks up three. Man, he turned that corner thinking, I got some room. And then yoink. Third down. Three of seven on third downs for Bear River. It's third and two. Jepson's going to keep it. He's hit right at the line of scrimmage, but he looks like he manages to stay on his feet enough to pick up a first down. He needed two, he got two and an inch. Ah! 
You talked about third down conversions. Logan is three of 11 on third down. That's a big one that's gone against him tonight. They played a clean ball game last week against Skyview. Didn't make mistakes. Assignment sound, and they just haven't been able to stack another good one here. Tonight, they made a lot of errors tonight. And Bear River, a one and four team, desperate for a win, coming in here and looking like anything but a one and four football team. Fifteen yards for Jepson. That's the thing about football, right? You get to enjoy it for about one night. <laughs> and then it's time. Mountain Crest beats Green Canyon 13 nothing. So after Green Canyon scores 43 against Bear River last week, Mountain Crest shuts them out. Here's Jones as Bear River is trying to put this one away. He picks up 15 more. He's at 196 yards rushing. And Bear River is going to have close to 300 yards rushing in this ball game. Logan not being able to finish some early drives and in an early turnover put him in a bad spot. They got behind a Bear River team that just gained confidence with each possession as Logan failed to slow him down by the time Logan did start slowing him down. As Jepson grabs it on a busted play and falls forward to the line of scrimmage. Once Logan finally did kind of slow him down a couple of times and they got back to within a score. The big play reared its ugly head against the Grizzlies again and Bear Rivers put together, just executed a really masterful game plan here tonight against the Grizzlies. They played hard, they've run hard, they've taken what the Grizzlies have given them and they've taken even more than that at times. Jones with a yard, 197 yards on 23 carries for him as Tupelo. Tupo, Tupoa. Sorry, sorry, Mrs. Tupoa. I got Tulosi's name if I'm saying your name wrong. 3.05 to play in this ball game. Bear River trying to close the door. Hey, remember the factory pizzeria? They're open late. They're still open. I might drive past it. I might go get some pizza on the way home tonight. They open at 10 o'clock still? All right. That, the, yes, they're telling me. Factory Pizzeria, I mean, their nachos are great. They've got onion rings, wings, poppers, matzo sticks. They got great garlic bread. They got loads of specials. You can order online, and remember their Monday special. So Monday's coming up in a few days. Nobody likes Monday, but you'll like it at the Factory Pizzeria. Buy any large pizza, get the second half off. The Factory Pizzeria, one of our Game of the Week sponsors. Bear River trying to close the door on the Grizzlies. Throwing the quick hitter. Is that Jones out of the backfield? No, they run the play action to him and then they threw to the outside. It's complete to Ballard and it's a first down. And that might do it. Nine of 14, 152 yards and a touchdown for Jepson as the clock runs under two minutes and 40 seconds to play in the ball game. Give it to Jones, right up the middle. Jones pushes down to the 10 yard line and comes out the back of the scrum, but they blow it dead at the 10. Three yards for Jones and that puts him at 200 yards rushing for the night. That helps make the math easier. 267, 275 yards rushing unofficially for Bear River this evening. 
and 152 through the air. So 425 yards nearly of offense for Bear River. Most of it on the ground. There's a flag as the ball is snapped. And blow the whistle and blow it dead. See if Bear River moved or if Logan was offsides. Bear River moved. The sixth penalty of the night. Logan's only been rung up twice. That's one of the things Logan has done well tonight. They haven't been penalized. But they've done other things well. They just, again, they, they haven't been able to finish drives. And when this game was still on the line, they were settling for field goals when Bear River was putting it in the end zone. So that's a matter of execution. They got inside the 25 yard line. Logan did three, four times that I can remember and only came away with one touchdown. So now it'll be second down and 13 with a 147 to play in the ball game. Logan with two timeouts left and down by two touchdowns. They don't look like they're in any hurry to take them. Jepson's gonna keep it. Jepson right up the middle and he picks up the penalty yardage back and then some. And Logan does take their second timeout. Five yards for Jepson. He now has 72 yards on 16 carries. Bear River beat Clearfield 33-14. They lost to Morgan 37-14. They lost at Highland 46-35. They lost to Box Elder 29-13. They lost to Green Canyon 43-14. Tonight they put 35 points on the board. On their way to a victory over Logan. A seeming victory over Logan. It's not over yet, but I've seen crazy things happen in over 30 years of broadcasting sports. I don't know that I've seen 16 points in a minute 37 crazy, though. <laughs> it's first time for everything, right? Jepson unloads. Touchdown. Ball game, Olsen with a nice grab, seven yards, and the dagger. Four catches, 89 yards, two touchdowns for Olsen. And now Jepson is 10 of 15, 159 yards and two touchdowns. Nearly 400 yards of offense for Bear River. PAT is blocked. And with 90 seconds left in the ball game, it's 41-20. Bear River on their way to the win. Well, we've had a chance to mention all of our sponsors here tonight, all of our Game of the Week sponsors. I'll take just a moment to mention them all once more, just because they, we appreciate them and what they do, sponsoring Valley Sports, The Logo Shop, KSM Music, Custom Fence, Hoo-Ha, Old Grist Mill, The Factory Pizzeria, Wendy's, Palmer Home Furnishing, Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology, Aspen Dental, Rich's Cars and Credit, and Anderson Seed and Garden, thanks to all of our Game of the Week sponsors. Well, with our results here tonight, Skyview goes to one and one, Ridgeline goes to one and one, Mountain Crest, I believe, is one and one. As we, here's the kickoff. Taking it about the nine yard line, and return right up the middle, to about the 29. Logan's now one and one, and Bear River is one and one. 
So, uh, a lot of parity in this region. They, the uh, RPIs came out. The first week of RPIs came out this week, and Ridgeline was on top of that, at least not on top of the all of 4A, but on top of the teams in the Valley. I believe they were at four or five. Here's Pong, stepping up, taken down again by big number 74, and he fumbles it. I think that's Bear River football. It is Bear River football. Third turnover of the night for Logan, and Bear River can just take a knee and get on the bus and go home. Pawn now at minus 16 yards rushing. A lot of it because of that bad snap. It goes to him, but it's not really, it's not really his, it's not really his fault on that one. But 129 yards rushing for Logan, 200 yards passing. 329 total yards for the Grizzlies. Oh. No, they're not gonna, they're saying it's not a turnover. I don't know how that worked. They talked about it and reversed themselves. Okay. They kind of all talked about it. They, one of the officials said it was Bear River ball, and it looked like Bear River ball. I mean, I saw the ball come out from all the way up here, but they said, never mind. And Logan's got the ball back with the clock running. This pass falls short of the intended receiver. Bear River with 281 yards rushing. 440 yards, did I say almost 400 yards? Yeah, 440 yards total for the night. 281 on the ground, 159 through the air. That's third and 11. Pawn steps up, grabbed again, sacked again. So 326 yards now for Logan. That's three sacks for Bear River. As both student bodies debate who has the most spirit down below us. From what I understand, both sides have spirit. Yes, they do. They have spirit and then they want to know how about you. The more things change, the more they stay the same. 54 seconds. And the clock stopped. Did Bear River call that timeout? I was looking down at the stats, giving you up the updated stats there. Maybe Logan called the timeout. 54 seconds. Fourth down and 15. Thornley goes in motion. Out and up as they're looking for Thornley. Thornley goes up to get it, and it falls incomplete. Defensive back there. To try to break up that play, and he gets there just in time. That's James Anderson, the junior. He's made a couple plays tonight, and every time he has, he's let the Grizzlies know about it. He's the guy that got told by a coach after a, a little bit too much on one hit that, hey, son, we don't. But I've watched him tonight. He plays, with, he plays with a lot of juice. So Bear River in that victory formation. And you don't have to let the clock Click down because you know it's not running right now, so you gotta snap it to get it running. They're gonna have to snap it one more time.
Next week, Logan plays Mountain Crest right here. It's homecoming, and we'll have that one for you. Both teams one and one. Mountain Crest coming off the shutout win over Green, er, over Green Canyon. Logan will be coming off this loss that I'm sure is not going to sit well with them. So that ought to be an interesting one next week. The Grizzlies and the Mustangs, a lot of history between those two teams as the final seconds tick off the clock here. And the Grizzlies with their first game on their own home field this season because of the construction fall to Bear River, 41 to 20. We hope you enjoyed the game tonight and join us next week. It's homecoming for the Grizzlies against Mountain Crest. You're watching the game of the week on the Valley Channel. See you next time. The game of the week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Wendy's of Cache Valley. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology. Bring back what you have been missing. Palmer Home Furnishings. Our low overhead means higher quality at lower prices. Aspen Dental. Get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. Custom Fence Company. Privacy, security, peace of mind. Riches Cars and Credit. Good guys you can trust. Anderson Seed and Garden. Growing better gardeners. The Logo Shop. We logo stuff. All kinds of stuff. KSM means music. Music is all we do. Factory Pizzeria. We're open late after the game. And the Valley Channel. Cash Valley's TV station for over 30 years. Today's obviously we're always looking for ways that we can bring back what we've lost. In hearing that's particularly important so you don't drive people wild with frustration and technology going hand in hand with your hearing aids. You've got something fabulous just come in haven't you? Bluetooth. Yep. Bluetooth has been in hearing aids for a long time but there's something new, a new manuf um, manufacturers come out with a new product that makes it very simple. It, we used to have to either take our phone out and talk into our phone but the hearing aid would come into both of our ears but now you don't even have to take your phone out of your pocket. When your phone rings you push a button on the hearing aid and start talking. What? This is a new innovation I'm sure. It is. Yes. Uh, we've been trying to do it for a long time and this company just barely figured out how to do it and it's been very good. Right. So you love it because you've tried it out haven't you? Yes, I wear it. I, I enjoy it. Yeah. Don't even have to take your uh, phone out of your pocket, out of your bag, out of anywhere. The phone rings, hit the button, and then you're talking. Yes, and you can be, you can be sitting on your, your couch watching TV, your phone could be across the room, and push the button and it answers it, and you just start talking. Wow, you, you just can't even believe the uh, innovations, can you, in technology these days? It's really amazing. And there's a, a, a TV connector that connects to your TV, so you can be streaming from, directly from your TV right into both ears. You can have the, the TV volume set at what you like it, and everybody else in the room can have it where they like it. Wow, that would be fantastic, right? And then your phone rings and you push the button and answer the phone. <laughs> All this from the comfort of your own couch. Bluetooth technology, of course, been around, like you say, for a while, but you've just got this in. Are you going to start recommending this to people? I am. Yeah. In fact, I've probably put on five or six people already, and they love it. Really? Yes. Okay, well, we can't ask for more than that. Uh, so if you're thinking that you'd like to get right up to date to, with the technology available in your hearing aid, come on down here to Cash Valley Hearing and uh, talk to Dr. Danes. He'd love to help you. Tell us where we are, Dr. Danes, and how people can get hold of you. We are four. 35 North Main, uh, right across from the New Zions Bank, and our phone number is 753-4327. Okay, it, just out there as far as technology, and it just sounds great. If I ever need a hearing aid, this is the kind that I'm getting. Thanks, Dr. Dames. Bring back what you've been missing. Bring back Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology.